solve equations that are basically proofs of transactions. So when you get your payment, what, how do you actually like pay your electric bill? Like what are the process, what's like the process you go through or like somebody could expect to go through when they start mining? Like how would they get their crypto payout to pay their electric bill? Like what steps do you go through or what do you recommend for some people? Um, the step I go through, I mean, it depends. I mean, if I'll have two wallets, uh, depending upon how many cards is set up to work. Um, you know, if I'm just trying to put away Bitcoin, then it's going to, you know, a treasure wallet. If I'm deciding that, okay, I need to pay my electric because of this, well, it's going to my Coinbase wallet this way. Either one, I can use my shift card. Or two, I can just withdraw the Bitcoin into my bank account and it's there, you know, usually four days. I mean, sometimes it's a week, but majority of the time it's about four days that Coinbase will withdraw the money into your bank account. But, um, you know, that's, that's a big thing for me. I, I'm trying to get to the point where I'm out of fiat completely and just using crypto to pay for my everyday necessities pretty much. I've been living that life for a while and it was stressful at first. When I f went in like full crypto, I like took my paycheck, just split it three ways, bought Bitcoin and Ethereum. It was actually when like a month or two ago, whenever Coinbase added uh, Litecoin, I just started going all in three ways, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. And it was crazy. Like I was like Ethereum dipped, Bitcoin dipped a little bit. Next thing you know, they're all up and Litecoin's following and I'm just like, all right. But when you wake up to volatility and that's only money you have, it's kind of crazy to wake up one day to like 20% less money. 10% less money or wake up some days to 20% more money than you did or value I should say more value um, but the thing about like uh, using crypto as daily money is I can pick Bitcoin Ethereum or Litecoin with the shift payment card so whichever one's having a better day that's the one I can use to spend throughout the day and um, so like if you're doing Bitcoin mining Ethereum mining Litecoin mining you could have them individually sending to your individual wallets on Coinbase. You can just pick from one of the best profitable coins to use. It's like that is the best part about using crypto, in my opinion. You have a uh, a choice of currency. I have a choice of Litecoin, a choice of Bitcoin, and I can choose how to use it. Do I cash it out and just get fiat in my bank account? Do I use it as Bitcoin, direct peer to peer Bitcoin? I'm spending it. You're holding it and accepting it. Or do we just you know go use our shift card and swap it out at the transaction? Um, Let's see. What is uh, what is one of the what is one of your favorite like coins to um, maybe? I would say like trade like trade. Do you trade it all personally? Uh, I used to trade a lot. Um, in the beginning, uh, I was really bad. I would lose money on all kinds of trades because uh, I wasn't patient. You know, it was just like, well, it went down. I'm losing money and panic sell. You know, you see it very often where people. Prices crash and they sell, you know, especially with Bitcoin. When the price is this much, it's easier to, to dump in, get the price to drive down or up a little bit more um, very quickly rather than, okay, like before it'd be like $50 here and $50 there. You can get it to jump, you know, $500 down very quickly now. Um, so it's just, it's about being patient, you know, buying and selling during dips, you know, this way, hey, I bought. You know this at 110 now it's at 150 and then you sell a little bit and then it goes down to 90 and you buy some at 90 and this way when it goes to 110 well you made 20 dollars off of the ones you bought at 90 so it's a you know uh, up and down process uh, what was one of your favorite coins to try to do this with though was it just like you just focus on like Bitcoin and ethereum or were there any like altcoins that you saw volatility in um, dash was one of my favorites um, for sure um, Digibyte coin. Yeah, Digibyte actually had a good run. Um, yeah, because back in the currency days, you know, actually we spoke with them um, in email, and uh, you know, developers seemed like great guys and everything like that. So um, we jumped on that as well, and uh, you know, it, it, it had a good run for a little while there. As soon as we added it on currency, and it, it kind of seemed that way um, with a lot of coins, you know, when. They got added to Cripsy, the price kind of jumped up afterwards as well. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the place to be as far as coins go. It's kind of unfortunate what happened at the exchange. And, you know, we were all very disappointed, um, big time for, for sure. Is that maybe why you're not trading as much? Uh, as far as trading that way, I mean, um, 
I'm focusing like a lot of things, kind of, you know, with the mining, at least I can just turn my computer on and it just does its own thing, but um, I also recently gotten into uh, Floniex's uh, trading, so, or lending. So the lending bot. Yes, I lending, have a lending is awesome. bot. Let's talk about lending, man, on Poloniex. So, um, how's your? What was your expectations before you started lending on Poloniex? And then, like, what, like, what are the actual results, and how did they vary? Uh, I mean, I expected like I was going to make a lot more probably than what I am, but given what I have, I mean, it's. I'm still making pretty good money. It better than better than just having a savings account, right? Way better than just having a savings account. I think you're looking at like fifteen percent markup on all of it. So, and it's a bot, so it's not like I had to sit there all day. A bot is literally lending it. Do they show you the years. trades they make with your money? Yes. So you'll have your closed trades, your open open ones, and lends, and all that. So it's all. And it's uh, just an IP address, so it's literally in a browser, it's a bot, and it's real simple to set up. Uh, buddy introduced me to it, and, uh, you know, so far it's doing pretty well as far as that goes. I plan to dump a little bit more Bitcoin into it, uh, probably within the next week or two. Um, luckily for me, I get paid in Bitcoin for my job, so um, that's a nice thing to be able to have at my discretion as well, so... Yeah, you don't have to pay the exchange of buying Bitcoin. You get paid in Bitcoin. You're skipping a whole step. Yes. So I don't have to wait. I'm, well, I have to wait for payday. But other than that, yeah, it's uh, you know, that's I chose that. Um, you know, I just it's just the easier way to go for me. Uh, so that's with the uh, undisclosed exchange that you work for now. They they're optional, either fiat or crypto. Yeah. So even with Cripsy as well, um, you know, you had either option. Um, like even a percentage, you could be, hey, I want to have, so at Cripsy, I think I did like $200 a paycheck would go towards Bitcoin. And back in those days, majority of the time it was good because, you know, that was either half a Bitcoin to a Bitcoin during that time or even more at that point. So um, it worked out really well um, being able to kind of set that money aside and just let the Bitcoin grow in an account. And that was that. Um, That's awesome. Is that... Um do these exchanges do you think use Bitwage to do as their payment or payroll services? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm interested. That's pretty damn cool to get. Like you have a, you can either get paid in all cash, some crypto, all crypto. That's a really great option. I feel like every employer should have that. Like I, I want that option for my employer now. Yeah, I, 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 mean, look, I know it came out. It comes out, and you see it in your check that, like, and like an extra kind of, like, you see, like, hey, this is state tax, this is Medicaid, well, this is, like, your crypto. Oh, wow, pay. they uh, they take all that out and then pay you in your crypto? So yeah. You don't have to worry about, like, your pay, your your income tax and all that. They take care of it, and then you get your crypto? Well, for a cripsy, that's how it was handled. That's so, game-changing, um, gangster, because majority, then you don't have to worry. Yeah, I mean, a majority of other exchanges, including the one I'm at now, um, you know, you're a contractor, so it's up to you to pay taxes. Right, that makes it a little that. more complicated, and some people may be a little more skeptical of the taking the job because of the responsibility of paying your own taxes. Yeah. But I think the idea of having it taken out and then getting your pay in crypto kind of puts you on that line that you can walk with confidence. You know, like, I paid my taxes. I don't have to worry about it. But it is. It, so you're currently, with the position you have where you're at, they don't take out your payroll tax? No. So, so how would you handle that, if you don't mind getting into that? Because I know a lot of people are really interested in, like, how taxes work in crypto and, like, capital gains and, and how you, if you got paid in Bitcoin, how would you go about your taxes? So do you have any, like, roadmap for that? Well, that's not a capital gain because it's, you know, my paycheck hourly wages. That right, I just meant salary. along the line of paying so taxes So basically what I'm doing, I actually opened up a secondary bank account and, um, the day I get paid, um, 15% of whatever I get paid literally is being sold on Coinbase and directly into that bank account this way. It's in there, and I don't have to worry about it this way. You know, I was told um, by a millionaire, a friend that's a millionaire, you know, put 10 to 15% of each paycheck away. Um, 
You know, but then there's also bonuses on the other side. Uh, open up an LLC, you can claim your rent up to a third of your rent. So, you know, it's, like I said... You can get all your Donald Trump shit and <laughs> <laughs> avoid some taxes. It, a little bit, you know. So it's like, you know, like I said, the blueprint. I was, you know, being able to have friends that are millionaires that have been through this, have multiple businesses and, you know, ways to, you know, make sure that you're not getting killed during tax season for this. So he laid it out for me and told me exactly what to do, and, you know, I'm just following that step. Yeah, like you said, blueprints, success, there's there's roadmaps to success, and if you follow them, you will most likely end up there, and um, that's that's what we're doing. Um, so, I would like to try to segue a little bit into more, like, um, like tech support and stuff. Like, I know that's kind of, like, what you do uh, on the on your living end, and basically, I know we both end up doing this on, like, Facebook and, and social media-wise, where we're, we're just helping people that are in technical issues. Uh, what are some of the most common mistakes people make or, or common issues people have and how could they avoid them and, and not end up in that position? Um, one of the biggest things I would say is, you know, not kind of like rushing into things too quickly. Um, you know, test the waters first, uh, you know, try it out, you know, try to break something, you know, basically is how I uh, explain it, you know, instead of hey, well, I have $10,000, I want to get into this crypto game, let me try to deposit $10,000 into this account, and then, you know, you lose your password or, you know, your uh, UV key or something goes wrong, and then you're out of a large amount of money. You know, get familiar with the features, use the websites and stuff like that first. S small amounts, you know, $20 here, $10 there, and, and play with it for a little bit first. And once you get comfortable, it's kind of like, you know, Facebook was, okay, like, how do I post, you know, how do I comment on someone, everything is, you know, trial and error, so it's better to try it with, okay, like, what am I willing to risk, um, you know, if I lose $10, you know, it's $10, it's not that big of a deal, um, so just get familiar with the website, the exchanges first, before you, you know, dive head first into the deep end, and uh, decide that, hey, I need floaties later, um, you know, that's, that would be one thing. Another thing, um, you know, is, is patience. You know, you got to realize there's a lot of people in the crypto market nowadays, and there's a lot of tickets overflow that comes everywhere has got it. Um, putting in multiple tickets about the same issue, um, it leads to confusion on our side of things, especially because you might have two people working the same thing, and then, um, you know, things kind of get sat 